Um, good morning and uh, welcome to Morning Blow. Thank you all for joining us once again. Sally, good morning. You're looking as beautiful as ever. Oh, and a good morning to you, Nick. You're looking as aged as ever this morning. Well, Sally, let's get on with today's program and share with our viewers what's in store on today's edition of Morning Blow. Today we delve into the supernatural with our resident expert, Louis. He was out on location over the weekend investigating a recent sighting of the Slender Man. Has anyone actually seen him around the office this morning? Our resident hipsters stopped by for another edition of Hipster Kitchen. I wonder what treat they'll be pioneering for us today. We take a look at what's happening around the globe in, so in today in social media. Really? That's back again? I thought we'd given up on that last time we tried it. Mm. There is so much exciting stuff coming your way on the show today, including our infamous Minute with an Angry Man segment. But first, let's have a look at what's happening at the news desk with Heidi. Good morning. I'm Heidi Munch. Our top story this morning, Supreme Court Judge Sir Darrell Dawson has rejected a plea from the man accused of bashing his brother last Saturday night in what is believed to have been a provoked attack. Mr Jackson stated that his punishment should be reduced because although he did engage in a confrontation with his brother, he attempted to defuse the situation. Mr Dawson rejected this plea on the grounds that he didn't consider shouting, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, why are you still hitting yourself, to be a de proven diffusive technique. The judge went on to say that he had also called dibs on the front seat for the ride home and that Mr Jackson was a doo-doo head. Mr Jackson replied with, no fair, I'm telling mum, before le leaving the courtroom. The court session is expected to resume at 3 o'clock this afternoon, after nap time. And that's all for me at the news desk. Now back to you, Slutty and Dick. I'm sorry, Sally and Nick. This is the gadget bit. Thanks, Heidi. How was your weekend? Oh, it was eventful. I attended a wedding, but I made out with the groom and got chased away by the bridal party. So that was a downer. But over and all, it was a typical weekend in Heidi World. Well, Heidi, I can see why you didn't get invited to my wedding. And now it's time to check in with Sam, the weatherman, for our latest weather. Cloudy skies out today, Sam? It's fine. Um, could you elaborate on that for us, Sam? It's a little bit Sally. It's what? It's fine. Ugh. Well, that was certainly informative. Stick around anyone who is chasing a weather update. Sam will be back later in the show. Nick? Sally, over the past few weeks, I've become somewhat of a ghost hunter. And in this next segment, our resident supernatural expert, Louis, has compiled a report on the legendary Slender Man. Take a look. Hi, I'm Louis, and I'm here in the swamp of the twice dead, three times removed, to investigate a reported local sighting of the legendary being known only as the Slender Man. According to legend, the Slender Man is a tall, faceless figure adorned with a black suit and tentacles. Kind of like my mother-in-law, am I right? Come on, let's go. Since the first alleged documentation of the Slender Man in the 1500s, this mysterious figure has cropped up all throughout history, accompanied by two constant companions, fear and death. The Slender Man, or Slendy to his friends, selects victims who have experienced great tragedy in their lives, and he literally stalks them to death. This process can take months, or even years. Symptoms of being stalked include paranoia, nightmares, hallucinations, and memory loss. He literally breaks down his victims emotionally before abducting them and brutally murdering them, often by impaling them on a tree branch. Kind of like my ex-girlfriend, am I right? But in all seriousness, 
I'm here today in the swamp of the twice dead, three times removed, in a world exclusive, literally, stalking the stalker. Now as you can see, I've devised a brilliant plan. I figure if I can use this permanent marker to draw a smiley face on that blank slate of his, it will destroy his fearsome appearance and thus nullify his psychological powers. I'm generally pretty brilliant like that. Yeah. I'm now three hours into my search and there's still no sign of the Slender Man, but I'll keep you posted on all of my findings on this expedition. In other supernatural news, we've got a low to medium chance of vampires across the country tonight, as well as astrologers predicting slight apocalyptic conditions across the country. Other than that, there's absolutely no supernatural activity on the immediate radar at all. Um, that was Louis with what may well be his last report. Well, we'll be back with more after this from Clara. Thanks guys. Today Roger Robertson joins me in our first ever live infomercial. Roger is showing us the quirky delights one can have with a few geeky gadgets. Good morning Roger. I believe you're here to show us the latest and the greatest from Feel the Force Creations. Good morning Clara. As you can see here, I have a collection of toys for the inner geek. First, our Lord of the Rings collection. Wow, Roger, they look incredibly high quality. Do these figurines have any special actions? Take Legola's bow and arrow, for example. Does it really shoot? Uh, no. Well, by all means, I'm excited for the rest of your products. Please talk us through them. Well, you, as you can see, there's some Doctor Who, there's some Star Wars. You can see we have DVDs, dolls, and other boring shit 45-year-old men who live with their mothers love to buy. You know what? I don't even know why I bother. I've been doing this job for 12 years. I don't even like Star Wars. I was just trying to make a living, you know, for the wife and kids. Next thing I know, she's bonking a neighbour. I'm stuck with a garage full of figurines based on movies I don't even care about. Oh, I'm very sorry to hear that, Roger. But I know what might cheer you up by focusing on these other splendid items you've brought with you here today. <laughs> no. Not enough. Never do you presenters really care. It's like you're paid to act interested or something. Whereas here's me, working my ass off to make a living, only to have my precious moment shattered by a job I hate, an unfaithful wife, and a kid who's probably not even mine. Fuck this. Well, thanks for coming in today, Roger. Let's cross back to the newsroom for all your latest updates. Could you see yourself owning a lightsaber, Sally? Only if it functions and I could get away with murdering my co-host. <laughs> mm. On that note, here's Minute with an Angry Man. There's one thing that really annoys me about uni, really bugs me, is the parking. It just took me 45 minutes to do a 15 minute journey just so I could get here and watch the Quidditch Grand Final. All because some blonde thing with a really nice set of personalities told me she'd be at the after party. I get here, I can't get on the uni because there's some drama exam on as people tramping up and down pretending the floor's made of lava or some shit. There's actually a guy standing in an open car parking space pretending to be a tree. Look! You're a tree, you don't need a car park in space. Another thing, have you actually tried to get parked in the university after 9 o'clock in the morning? Can't be done. When you include that with the parking officers traipsing up and down every five minutes, swear to God, the only source of income the university has is parking fines. Well, that and the many East fee, $500 for toilet paper and hand soap. What's that all about? If I'm using that much hand soap and toilet paper in one year, I need an ambulance, not a degree. It's not even good toilet paper. It's that single ply tracing paper crap. You know, the kind of stuff where you instantly regret not trimming your fingernails the night before. If we're paying a combination of $300 for parking passes and amenities fee, then I want chauffeurs and 12-ply crap wrapper. You know what? I'm going to the pub. <coughs> You're on. Oh, um... Mm. Okay, so how about we check back in with our news and weather team to get a hopefully more informed update. Welcome back to this extremely informed news update. I'm Heidi Munch. Scientists have discovered a tribe in Africa who believe that stabbing their leaders in the back, then defecating on their territory, will make them more popular. Local MP for Newcastle says she's just happy to know that our Prime Minister has a script to follow. In other news, Morning Blow co-host Nick Nicholson was spotted leaving Newcastle's red light district last night. That's right, Nicky. We saw you in your dirty little smile. 
and as no one could be expected, no one was surprised. That's all from me for now. I'm Heidi Bunch reminding you, Nikki Nicholson likes it kinky. Um, and now with the weather, we are joined again by Sam. It's still fine. I'm busy. Try looking out the window or something. Um, and that's it for weather. Hopefully we have a new weatherman tomorrow. Not likely while I'm sleeping with the station manager. Okay, moving on. Do you know what Instagram is, Nick? <laughs> of course I do, Sally. What a silly question. <laughs> you know, it's just sometimes I need to explain things to you. You're a little bit stupid like that. <laughs> <laughs> Must be your time of the month. Anyway, if you use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Tumblr, then our next segment's for you. We have with us today our social media teen, Crystal. Welcome to the show. What? Welcome to the show? What? I said, welcome. <sighs> Never mind. Um, so, uh, tell us about what's going on online, Crystal. What am I doing? Online? Online! What is going on online? Jeez, no need to yell, dude. All right, let's see. Well, Karen Facebook me. I hate her. This one time, I asked this guy to my formal. His name was Carl, right? And anyway, she told me it was fine. She's like, yeah, go for it. He's really cute. Anyway, so at the formal, she made a big scene and really embarrassed herself because she got totally jealous. And it was just really awkward. We don't care. So let's move along to Twitter now, Crystal. What's trending? Uh, something about the war, something about the economy crashing. And oh my God. Oh my God. Um, Crystal, tell us what happened. My favourite band, they're releasing a new single. <sighs> I can't even. We'll have to wrap things up now. Every week you have a look on YouTube for something you can learn and try for us here in the studio. So what have you got for us this week? Uh, well, I had a look around. I learned this thing called the cop song. Oh, what's the cop song? Well, you sing this song and you do this thing with a cop. Okay, well, why don't you show us? Okay. Just stop. Uh, that's it for our social media segment, guys. Coming up next, Hipster Kitchen. So thanks for that lame introduction. Anyways, welcome to Hipster Kitchen, where all the recipes are so obscure you've probably never even heard of them. So welcome Clementine and Atticus to Morning Blow. What's on the menu today? We're making an organic, ecologically sustainable green smoothie. Sounds great. Sort of like a boost juice? No. <laughs> so let's get into it then. What's the first step? So first you're going to need a spoon to mix. We choose not to use electric mixer because electricity is not ecologically sustainable and we want this smoothie to be carbon footprint free. The next thing you need to do is make the base of the smoothie. We were going to use the coffee made from the fresh black ivory beans sourced from the upper hills of Thailand that we bought earlier on Derby Street, but in instead we're just going to take a photo to upload to our blogs to show you just how tired we are of you mainstream jerks. The sepia filter with high contrast? Totes. You look so avant-garde. <laughs> so what base will we be using today? Anyway, you want to use ice as the base because it was water before it was cool. Sounds delicious. Now that you've said that, I'm going to have to drink this smoothie, ironically. <sighs> these look great. Are these going in the smoothie? Uh, they're actually biscotti and they're for me to have later with my Double shot, 50-50 decaf soy latte. <laughs> right, so what's the next step then for our viewers at home? The next thing you want to put into this organic vessel is some greenery, but because it's so conformist to use spinach, kale or spirulina, we've decided to use this experimental liquid found only in the most underground stores. Um, is that really organic? It looks artificial. Oh, that word makes me so devo. Unless it's used between the, fl the words no and flavouring. <laughs> the next thing you're going to do is combining the quinoa, chia seeds and flax seeds into the mix. So for our viewers at home, how much would you recommend putting in? One cup? One teaspoon? Um, I don't know. I only measure in Instagrams. 
So what's next then? Looks super healthy so far. The next step is ingesting it. Cheers. It makes your bowel movements so regular. And so cleansing. And I think that's all we have time for, unfortunately. Thank you for sharing your amazing recipe today. And for you at home, you can catch the recipe on our website. Thank you so much, Clementine and Atticus. Brilliant as always. The hipster kitchen is one of my favourite parts of the show. Those groovy hipsters sure know how to get my tummy rumbling. What are you, five? I'm performing. No, you're being patronising to the viewers. I swear to God, if you can't start taking this show seriously, I will put red in your green smoothie. Spoiler alert, the red is your blood. <laughs> well, this train wreck has a lot arrived at the station and if you possess some kind of memory wiping device, feel free to erase the last half hour from your mind and join us refreshed again tomorrow here at Morning Blow. That's all from us here at Morning Blow. We couldn't continue this crap if we tried. Thanks for joining us and losing brain cells in the process. This is the catchy part, sing my song You got a brain so use it This is all awesome in music Every time I keep it, every time I know